Hello everybody, how are you? Uh, I'm okay, I'm a fair bit sick with a cold, but uh, we're not gonna dwell on that too long, so I'm sorry if my voice is a little bit uh, croaky today. My name's Andrew, welcome to Sprinkle Money, the channel where I talk about finances and the budget and shares and uh, personal wealth and personal spending, etc., etc., etc. businesses, blah, 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 blah. Before I go on, a little disclaimer, as per usual, it's just my thoughts. Don't take anything I say for gospel. Uh, I'm not paid by anyone to do anything here. I'm just sharing my thoughts and hopefully I can entertain you with uh, bits and pieces about finance. So it's May 2023 and the Australian government has handed down its latest budget. Uh, it's uh, Mr. Chalmers' second, I believe, and... I don't want to harp on too much because obviously there's a lot to cover, but I'm going to, to really focus on investors um, today and just my thoughts about whether we are winners or losers with this budget. Hit me out. I think I think we're winners. Okay, if you're a property investor, I think we're winners. So let's start with the first point, which was that uh, you can now, if you are a build to rent type of investor, if you are going to start a, a new project. Um, and, and it's a build to rent project. I, don't, I do not know a lot about that actual project, but if you are going to do that, well, there's a little incentive for you, and that is that you will now be able to claim a 4% deduction per year on your project. So that's a little bit of a carrot for those of us who have, um, who, who, who'd like to maybe consider this, um, you know, building, building brand new properties for rental purposes. Okay, is this a clever move? I think I think it is because it kind of mm, it does boost the housing industry, doesn't it? Like we can, we'll have more stock, that's for sure. Um, so we'll never have the issue um, as long as this policy keeps going of having that um, the uh, low supply being the actual issue for uh, for rentals. So I think if I had the right the right amount of money, I would definitely consider a new build now. Um, two and a half percent takes 40 years, obviously, to um, claim your money back. At four percent, you know, it's going to be a lot less. Um, it's only about 25 years to see the benefit. So if someone's a young investor, someone in their 30s who's got some spare cash lying around, who's looking at investing in um, property, this might be a, a good little, um, you know, a good little annual return at four percent. Um for the depreciation rather than two and a half. So I think that's, that, that's been, a, it's been a good move. There's been a bit of an increase to the rental uh, supplement, I think they're calling it, whatever it is. I'll put the name up here. I forgot what it's called. The rental subsidy scheme, I think it's called. Anyway, it, um, so what it means is that uh, people who are on low incomes will receive a little bit of extra rental support. Uh, and that's, can, that can only be a bit of a, a flow on effect. Again, I think that's a, a good little positive move from the government to uh, to help people who are struggling, obviously, or you know, job seekers, that sort of stuff, and uh, and at the same time support uh, property investors. Knowing that there's more of a rental subsidy now, I don't like. I don't know. I personally, unless I've done something significant to the house, I, w I wouldn't increase the rent. I would increase the rent accordingly. Obviously, it's going to be up to the owners whether they increase the rent accordingly. I hope not. I think, you know, people, we can see people are struggling on, on, on the whole. Um, yeah, it's, it's, we've, we've, we've had rental increases recently, but I don't think we need any more. So that might help, you know, maintain, um, maintain good relationships with the uh, renters. Okay. For, uh, more importantly, what I, how I think we've actually won is the government could have, and there's been talk about it for quite some while now, could have really come down on investors in a number of ways um, to try to curb house prices going through the roof um, and can at least take the investors out of the market so have let the first home buyers you know at the stock um, and I think they could have done a whole bunch of things to make that happen um, it would have been like a double-edged sword they could, they could have done a whole bunch of stuff like um, increased stamp duty for investors they could have limited investors to maybe maximum a couple of properties is it so i read recently a whole bunch of stuff where the government could smartly curb um and the way that investors are using 
property to create wealth and what that's doing to the house prices and putting the upward pressure and blah 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 and so i feel like um the government by not doing things not not taking advantage of investors is uh has been really a bit of a positive move because they could have very easily especially with the inflation and with um, rental increases and the way that um, property prices have gone through the roof and they're coming down a little but not enough i feel it's good that the government hasn't really they've like left us they've left us alone the government's left us alone so uh, let me know of your thoughts do you agree with me do you think we've um, as, as property investors we've kind of gone okay um or do you think that uh, maybe there could have been more done or you know maybe the government could have tightened their belt around what we're doing but um anyway let me know in the comments below and i'll uh yeah see if we can have a discussion there other than that thank you for watching to the end um my name is andrew sprinkle money um if you haven't subscribed please do love to have conversations about money and uh yeah well uh i hope to see you in the next video bye